Hello there, everyone. My name's Andrew. And I'm Cassie. And this is the Culips English Podcast. Welcome back to Culips, everyone. You're listening to Catchword, which is our series for intermediate and advanced English learners, where we teach you idioms, phrasal verbs, and expressions that will help improve your English listening and speaking. Now, today I am joined by my co host, Cassie. Hello there, Cassie. Hey, Andrew, and hi, listeners. I hope you're all doing well. Andrew, I have a question for you to kick off today's episode. A question. I love it. Okay, sure. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Okay, my question is Did you have any role models or people you really admired when you were younger? You know, like a superstar athlete or a pop singer or something like that? Hmm. Superstar athlete. Yes. Vancouver Canucks player, number 10, Pavel Bure. <laughs> Ice hockey player, my favorite. Such a Canadian reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why do you ask, Cassie? I'm asking because in today's episode, we're going to teach our listeners two idiomatic expressions that describe outstanding individuals. You know, people that have differences from others that sets them apart. And the first expression we're going to teach is cream of the crop. And the second expression is poster child. And Andrew, maybe now you'll understand why I was curious about your childhood role models. Because role models are usually, you know, the cream of the crop or the poster children of our society. Mm -hmm. I see the connection now, Cassie. Well, I think this is going to be an awesome lesson, and these are wonderful expressions for everyone to learn and to add to their vocabularies. They are very common English expressions. So, guys, we'll jump into our lesson here in just a moment. But before we do, we want to remind you that there is an interactive transcript and a study guide that is very helpful for this episode, and it's available to all QLoops members. The exercises in the study guide are created to help you understand the key aspects of this lesson to improve your English fluency and to help your English sound more natural. So to discover all of the details and to sign up and become a QLips member and get access to the study guide so you can use it and study along with us while you listen here today, then just visit our website, which is QLips.com. And we want to give a huge thanks to all the QLips members out there who support the work we do here. Thanks to you, we can keep creating new episodes and English lessons each and every week. Your support is amazing and we couldn't do it without you. Okay, Cassie, let's get into today's lesson. As we mentioned, we're exploring two idiomatic expressions with quite different meanings, but they're both related because they both describe remarkable individuals, or in some cases, remarkable things, as with the first expression. The expressions are cream of the crop and poster child. Cassie, which one should we start with? What do you want to talk about first? Let's start with the first one you mentioned, cream of the crop. It might be the slightly more challenging expression, but I think it's more commonly used. Mm, yeah, I think so. So let's first start by spelling out the expression because I know some listeners are driving in their cars right now and they don't have access to the transcript. So let's spell this out for them. Cream is like the dairy product, right? <laughs> C-R-E-A-M, cream. And then we have of the crop, crop, C-R-O-P, which is not the most common word in English. So there may be some listeners out there that are like, what the heck is a crop? <laughs> so let's start by talking about that. Cassie, what the heck is a crop? Sorry, so funny when you say that word a bunch of times. Crop, crop, crop. Anyway, crop is the produce that farmers grow on their fields. So, you know, vegetables, fruits, anything that's grown on the fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the product that you farm is your crop. Right. So if you are a corn farmer, then at the end of the farming season and you harvest all of your corn, then all of that corn that you have, that is your crop, your crop of corn. And I agree with you, Cassie, that word does sound very funny now that I say it again and again. So let's put it all together then. 
What does it mean in its idiomatic sense, cream of the crop? Cream of the crop refers to the very best of a particular group or category. It's used to signify a high quality item or thing. And there's a similar expression like la creme de la creme. I don't know, like, yes. So the cream of the crop is, you know, very similar, the English version of that. And it just means the best of the best. Yeah, I think our French listeners right now, and maybe some other Romance languages as well, I'm not sure, but they're probably like, yeah, I got it. I know this expression right away because creme de la creme is like the cream of the cream, right? And I'm not really a dairy expert, but I think the cream is the best part of the milk. When you're making milk, it's like that thick, fatty, good part that's probably most healthy and most calorie dense. And so that is the best part of the milk, right? So the cream of the crop, it's like making a metaphor between farming and dairy, essentially. It's just saying like, maybe if you have a crop of pumpkins, maybe your biggest, most beautiful pumpkin, that will be the cream of the crop. But of course, since it's an idiom, we're not using it literally to talk about farming things. We're talking about it to describe other things in life. And Cassie, a similar expression comes to mind, which is the cream rises to the top. The cream rises to the top. Have you heard that expression before? I'm sure you have. I have. Not as much as cream of the crop, but yes, similar idea. You know, the best of the best are going to be the ones on top every time, and that's why they're considered the cream. Okay, Andrew, we've talked a lot about what cream of the crop means, but could you give us some sort of scenario, a situation where we could use this expression in everyday life? Mm -hmm. Okay, Cassie, let's imagine a university where students from all over the country apply. It's a very prestigious, very famous university. And among those students, there are a few selected to receive a prestigious scholarship for their amazing academic and extracurricular achievements. So these students we could call the cream of the crop. They are the university's best of the best, right? The students who get accepted to that university are already elite. They're already very high level. But among those high level students, they are the best of those students. They are the cream of the crop. So I think that will help illustrate it. But now I would like to give some examples to our listeners so they can hear how they'll be able to use it in a casual, everyday kind of English conversation setting. So Cassie, we have a few examples prepared for everyone to listen to. How about we get to the first one right now? Yeah, let's do it. Did you hear about the jazz festival next month? The lineup looks awesome. Yeah, it's impressive. Definitely the cream of the crop. Yeah, I know. It's not too often you get to see so many good musicians perform in one place. The tickets are expensive, though, but I'm thinking of going. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I have to see if I can get the weekend off from work, but if someone can cover for me, then I'm definitely in. All right. In this example conversation, we heard two friends talking about a jazz festival and they were very, very impressed with the lineup. The lineup is the acts, the musicians, the performers who will play at the festival. And so it was a stacked lineup and a stacked lineup just means there are tons of great musicians who will perform at that festival. So they described that lineup as being the cream of the crop. It was the best of the best, the best the jazz world has to offer. Cassie, there was one other kind of cool expression we heard in that example conversation when your character said, oh, I have to see if I can get the weekend off of work, but if someone can cover me, then I'll go to the festival. What does it mean if someone covers for you at work? I've used this expression a lot in my lifetime, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, if you haven't called off in advance for work, then you need someone to take over your shift or take over your duties. So if someone covers for you, it means they are working instead of you doing your work as like a substitute person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So often businesses can't really afford or they're not able to just like 
give you time off because somebody needs to do the work, right? That's why you're there. That's why they hired you in the first place. But if you can find one of your coworkers who will cover for you, who will replace you while you take a day off or an afternoon off or something, then sometimes the boss or the management says, ah, okay, yeah, you can go. So that's the meaning of that expression. All right, we have one more example with cream of the crop. Let's listen to it now. Hi, excuse me. I noticed you were looking around. Can I give you a hand with anything or are you just browsing? Oh, actually, I had a question about these backpacks. I'm planning a hiking trip and I need a new bag. Any recommendations? Mm, well, this one here, the Trailmaster, is absolutely the cream of the crop. It's durable and comfortable and we sell a ton of these. Wow, it looks great. You know, comfort is key on a long hike. I'll need something that can handle a few days worth of supplies, though. Is this one okay for that? Yeah, it should be big enough. Let me open it up here for you and you can take a closer look. All right. In this example conversation, we had a worker at a outdoor store and a customer. And this customer was interested in buying a new hiking backpack. And I don't know if any of our listeners are avid backpackers, but you need a really good, durable, sturdy backpack if you want to go hiking in the woods for days on end and carry everything on your back. And this employee recommended the Trail Master, which was a type of hiking backpack, and she said that it was the cream of the crop out of all the backpacks in the store. This one was the one she recommended the most. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be stuck out in the woods on a multi-day hike with a really low quality backpack, right? You want the cream of the crop because, yeah, that's just one other thing that you'd have to worry about on that kind of difficult trek. So, yeah, good high quality backpack, the cream of the crop. That's what you want. Cassie, just before we wrap up here and move on to the next expression, there's similar expressions in English to cream of the crop. We've mentioned a few of them already. We talked about elite, something being elite, something being the best of the best. And I always joke at my house when I had Pinky and actually recently my wife and I were dog sitting as well. So we had this little dog Gabby over here and I always joke with the dogs when I give them food, I say, it's the best of the best at our house. We give them very high quality dog food. And the reason I make that joke is because the dog food is made in Canada. So <laughs> nothing but the best, best of the best here. So that's a great expression as well. But can you think of any other similar expressions to describe something that's really elite, really the cream of the crop, really the best of the best? Yeah, I can think of two more. One of them would be top notch, which means, you know, like the top quality. Why, where does top notch come from? Like the highest peg on a setting? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. By the way, could you spell notch for us? Because that's a very unique word. Sure. Notch is spelled N-O-T-C-H. Cassie and I are both unsure of the exact meaning of this, which means, listeners, you don't need to know either. Just know <laughs> that it means the best of the best. Yeah, cream of the crop, best of the best, top notch. And the last one is first rate. Yeah, first rate. And again, something that's first rate just means like it's rated first, right? It's rated as the best. It's really, really good and excellent quality, better than the rest. So that'll wrap it up for our discussion about cream of the crop. But we have one more expression to introduce to you today, and it is poster child. Poster child. And that is, I think, the kind of just generic expression. Sometimes you also hear poster boy, poster girl, or poster child. I've never heard poster man or woman before. <laughs> Me neither. It sounds so weird when you just said it like that. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's always used with children. I think poster child is the best one to learn. Cassie, let's get into the meaning of poster child. Could you share the definition with us? Sure. Poster child refers to a person or thing that is seen as a typical example or the most notable representative of a particular quality, issue, cause, or business. Let me ask you a question. 
who is the poster child of fast food? I gotta say McDonald's. That's the number one that comes to mind. I think a lot of our listeners would agree as well. It's kind of the representative image that pops into so many people's minds when we hear fast food, right? We just get that image of McDonald's. And I'm sure all of the executives over at McDonald's are very happy about that fact. It's good for business when you are the poster child in a way like that. Ooh, or like the poster child of soda would probably be Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, the poster child of basketball would be like Michael Jordan, right? The poster child of pop music, maybe you could say is like Michael Jackson, right? Or Taylor Swift these days. Yeah, Taylor Swift these days, right? When we describe someone as being a poster child, then it means that that person really represents the issue or the thing that they do, right? Because often we use this in a political way too, to say like, she's a poster child for protecting the environment or something like that, some kind of issue or some kind of cause. And actually, Cassie, this expression has a really interesting origin. And listeners, if you go on Google and do some image searching, you can find some examples here. And we'll try and throw some in the study guide as well so you can see what I'm talking about. But back in the 1920s and 30s, now, I guess around 100 years ago or so, Cassie, these kinds of posters were common to see. So charities would advertise their charity and try to raise money and raise funds by putting a child on the poster. Maybe the images of the children pulled on the heartstrings of the people who saw those posters and they felt more inclined, more willing, more open to donating money to that charity. So for example, I saw one, which is weird, you know, it's like 100 years ago, but the culture really changes. So when I saw these posters, I was laughing almost because it's so politically incorrect these days to use the language that were on these posters. But they had pictures of children who had some kind of mobility issue. These days, we would say mobility issue. And that just means they have a problem walking or maybe a problem moving, right? A mobility issue. And so there was images of children like missing a leg and using crutches to get around. And then at the bottom, it said like, save the crippled children. And that word crippled is one that's very politically incorrect. It's not a word that we would use these days at all. So when I saw those images on Google, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God. But that's where it comes from. It's like those kids on the posters that charities would use to raise money for kids back in the day with mobility issues, for example. So that's like the origin, but now we use it in context where someone exemplifies a behavior or characteristics or issue very, very clearly. And the idea that came into my mind when I was thinking about this expression a little bit earlier, Cassie, was of Elon Musk, because such a controversial figure, right? He was like loved 10 years ago, and now he's hated. <laughs> he went from this like genius to somebody who's uh, hated really by so many people around the world. It's a crazy trajectory that he's on. But I think many people kind of think this, and I've heard many people say this recently. They'll say something like, oh, Elon Musk is the poster child for demonstrating how to ruin a business. <laughs> Oh, poor Elon. I don't know if it's poor Elon. <laughs> it was more like rich Elon, I think. But Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a very good demonstration of how we can use that expression because he represents ruining a business, right? We can all watch how Twitter has changed. Now X has changed so much over the last year or so. And so, yeah, I've heard people say things like that before. That's a good example, Andrew, because we can say that a poster child does not necessarily represent the best person of a category. It can also represent, you know, the best person of a bad category. Elon Musk is the best representative of a negative thing, ruining a business. So, yeah, it just means being the most recognized person of any category, good or bad. That's a great point, Cassie. And just to add, I think that also, we almost use it in that way more than we do in the positive way. It's like, he's the poster child of how not to do that thing, right? If your friend was a really dangerous driver, you'd say, oh, my friend's a poster child for how not to drive, right? I've had one of those friends before. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. 
So yeah, that's a great point. Cassie, just before we get into the examples, do you think you could share a scenario or a situation with us of how we might be able to use this expression in our regular everyday lives? Sure. For example, we could imagine a company that started as a small startup and it grew into a large and successful corporation. And the founder of this company could be described as the poster child for entrepreneurship. They represent the ideal of turning a small idea into a big business, embodying the characteristics of innovation, risk-taking, and determination. For example, I think Steve Jobs was probably the poster child of, you know, technology when he brought the iPhone into existence. Yeah, absolutely. Very good example. So with that being said, let's hop into the first example conversation now. Here we go. I heard Gavin's getting promoted to assistant director. That's terrific news. Good for him. Yeah, he really worked his butt off last year. It's great to see him be recognized for that. Yeah, seriously. He's like the poster child for how to get ahead in life. He started at the bottom as this lowly intern, and now look at him. He's going to be assistant director. So cool. All right, let's break this example conversation down. So in it, we hear two coworkers talking about their brand new assistant director. That guy's name is Gavin. And Gavin got a promotion. Why? Because he worked his butt off. And to work your butt off, or a little bit more rudely, some people say work their ass off. Okay, it exists. I wouldn't recommend using that one at work in the office, but a lot of people do say it means to work really hard. So he worked really hard and one of the coworkers described Gavin as being like the poster child for how to get ahead in life because he started at the bottom as an intern and now he's the assistant director. And so this means he's a really good representative. He's like the perfect fit of somebody who's hardworking and knows how to get ahead in life. He's the poster child. If you were like trying to advertise a book for steps you could take to get ahead in life and to get ahead in your career, then maybe you'd want to put Gavin's image on the cover of that book. He represents that idea so well. Perfect explanation, Andrew. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Shall we listen to the next one? Yes. <laughs> okay, example two. I love that sweater on you. Is it new? Thanks. Yeah, I just bought it last week, actually. Well, it looks amazing. I appreciate that because I'm usually the poster child for what not to wear, but I think I did okay with this one. You totally nailed it. In this example, one friend is complimenting her friend's new sweater, and this friend takes the compliment and says, Thank you so much. I'm usually the poster child for what not to wear. So that means that this friend is not fashion forward. They usually wear like mismatched clothes, maybe different colored socks, and they don't usually look that great. But they picked this great sweater today and they are no longer the poster child for what not to wear. Maybe they can be the poster child for what to wear. Yeah, they're really stylish today. And Cassie, just as you were explaining that, a thought came to my mind, and that is just how we can elevate our English and improve our fluency with expressions like this, right? If you were a lower level English learner, perhaps you would say something in, instead similar to, oh, I'm not so stylish or I have bad style, right? You're expressing the same idea, but there's no color to the language. It's not a very interesting way to express that. But by learning an expression like this, you can say, I'm usually the poster child for what not to wear. And although you're expressing the same core idea and the message is the same, it's just a lot brighter, a lot more interesting, a lot more flavorful way to express yourself. And so there's levels of fluency, right? And I think adding an expression like this to your vocabulary can just take you up a little bit and make you sound more natural and more fluent. I totally agree. The first expression that Andrew used, I don't have 
good fashion. I'm bad at dressing. Like people will just say, ah, yeah. But if you said I'm the poster child for what not to wear, like that might make your group members laugh because it's such an interesting and unique phrase. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, I recommend adding this one to your vocabulary, everyone. And if you get a chance to practice speaking English sometime soon, well, why don't you try it out and see how it goes over? And maybe your conversation partners will be as impressed as Cassie would be. <laughs> Well, I think that will bring us to the end of today's episode, everyone. So thanks for listening and learning with us today, and great job on completing an English study session here. To summarize what we covered today, we learned two idiomatic expressions: cream of the crop and poster child. And we learned that cream of the crop refers to the best of the best, or the most outstanding members of a group, which can refer to a person or a thing. While a poster child is only a person who is the most representative person of an issue, cause, or category. So, everyone, now we want to throw things over to you. We want you to practice making and leaving some example sentences with these two expressions. Show us what you learned and connect with other Qlips listeners from around the world on our Discord community. It's free to join, and you can do so just by following the link in the description for this episode. And if you like this episode, please support us. Your support allows us to keep making English lessons for learners all over the world, and we can't do Qlips without you. The best way to support us is by signing up and becoming a Qlips member. For all the details, you can visit our website qlips.com. You can also support us by following us on social media like Instagram and YouTube, telling your friends who are learning English to check us out, or by leaving a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to Qlips. So that's it for us for now, everyone. But we'll be back soon with another brand new episode. So until then, take care and goodbye. See ya.